Uh, my name is Dave Demers. In the investigation of the MGM, I was the manager of the Fire Investigations Department here at NFPA. And as a result, I was the manager of the team that we had at the, uh, at the fire scene. Well, the MGM fire, uh, hotel at the time was one of the first super hotels, super resort type casino operations. And it was like the new anchor of the strip. And here, this new modern facility has a major fire that we f were first hearing that, hearing that there were seven killed, 14, 21, and it just kept going up from there. We really didn't know for three or four days what the total death toll was, but just being such a major fire in such a new modern hotel. What is your strongest memory of that investigation? I think the, it was so massive and uh, it was such a large operation but probably one of the best managed uh, investigations I've ever seen. We were, the NFPA people, we were actually part of the official investigation team from Clark County uh, Fire Department. And so we participated in all the uh, investigator meetings, the task assignments, and we provided all the, really all the fire protection engineering and technical assistance to Clark County for that investigation. Since that fire, what has the hotel industry done to, and the building industry basically done to rectify situations like that? Number one, full sprinklers. I mean, that is just the basics, basic tenet for a good fire protection program. It's been proven for over a hundred years, well over a hundred years, and it was just proven again. But it really hit home with the uh, hotel motel industry at that time. Uh, purchasing of fr uh, furnishings and uh, products that are used in the hotel. Furniture, uh, interior finishes, usually coming from a central supply house or uh, central purchasing. And hotel motel managers started paying a lot of attention to that because they had to um, you know, provide fire safe materials. Obviously the huge changes it made in uh, Nevada in general to the entire hotel industry and the upgrades that had to be done, especially the retrofit of their existing hotels with sprinklers. Yeah. What about the seismic joints and the elevators, elevator lobbies and things like that? Um, the elevator lobby issue has been pretty well addressed. Uh, that's resulted in vestibules, uh, vestibule uh, elevator lobbies so that they are enclosed so you don't get smoke spread right up them. Changes in ventilation of hoist ways. So that's been addressed. Seismic joints um, has been a tough problem and uh, there are now design methods for providing fire resistance so that the uh, seismic joints can still flex but still provide vertical uh, fire separation. Anything that still needs to be done or is that? I think just re-emphasizing the basics and I think the important part of re revisiting the MGM is that um, we, you can't forget that basic stuff and that still has to be addressed and so that's probably the most important uh, piece of it. On behalf of the captain and the flight crew, I would like to welcome you to Las Vegas. The temperature is a balmy 92 degrees and the local time is 6.45 a.m. Your baggage will be arriving at Carousel 3 just a few minutes after our arrival. Ground transport is available to the city and to any of the hotels on the Strip. We trust you had a pleasant flight and hope you will fly with us again soon. Las Vegas, Nevada. Entertainment capital of the United States. A metropolitan area spanning two jurisdictions. Downtown, Las Vegas City. A permanent population of about 164,000 inside the city limits. And the Strip, outside the city limits in Clark County, Nevada. County population about 462,000. Principal industry, tourism. This was my first trip to Las Vegas. This was the third or fourth time we were in Las Vegas. Well, I was there to attend a professional convention and to have some fun. In 1980, almost 12 million tourists came to Las Vegas. A million tourists a month come to gamble and see the sights at the big hotels. The largest hotels are on the Strip. One of these is the MGM Grand. 
Opened in 1973 with more than 2,000 guest rooms, a casino, shops, restaurants, theaters, convention facilities, and a sports arena, the MGM Grand is one of the largest hotels in the world. On the morning of November 21st, 1980, Clark County Fire Captain Rex Smith was completing his shift when an alarm came in from the MGM Grand. And we received the alarm at approximately 7.20 in the morning, at which time we got on the fire engine and put on our gear and headed across the street to the side entrance of the MGM Grand. And there was light smoke emitting from the revolving doors there at the hotel. We uh, followed security guards approximately halfway across the uh, floor of the casino. And at that particular time, when we reached halfway across the casino, we were uh, met by flame, which was rolling down from the ceiling and progressed down toward the floor as it, as it was coming toward us. Uh, the flame was traveling at such a rate that chased us back to the entrance that we came in at. I asked for another alarm on the fire, and I asked for uh, additional rescue personnel and other items that I felt necessary to get into the uh, fire and to contain it. Fire Control Battalion 2, stand by for dispatch. We have a report of fire in the building in the deli of the MGM, entrance number two. And I uh, called over to my associate's room and told them that I saw smoke. We talked about it being a kitchen fire. I'd left Marilyn up in the room, and I came down the elevator and walked the length of the casino out the front door. And while I was waiting for my car, I turned around, and uh, there was smoke coming out the door behind me, followed by a lot of people. The marquee area was already in flames. It happened very fast. When I heard a lot of running in the hallway, and it just didn't sound normal to me. So I opened the door, and the hallway was just covered with smoke. And I wasn't dressed. I grabbed my coat. I just left. I ran and ran and ran, and I went nowhere. And Marilyn was still up in the room, and I just ran around like crazy for a couple of hours. People were going crazy, milling around outside, crying, looking for their families. I was one of them. I opened the hotel door to see what you know the noise was in the hall. And when I opened the door, thick black smoke just billowed in like ink. Then I gasped and just sucked the smoke into my lungs. And it was just like being stabbed in the chest. And I just dropped to the floor. More Clark County Fire Department fire and rescue units responded. Automatic aid calls brought firefighters from Las Vegas, Henderson. North Las Vegas and Boulder City, as well as other communities. A total of 544 firefighters responded to the fire. It was time to get out, so I went out the door, started crawling on my hands and knees. The smoke was just very, very thick. It was impossible to see. Everybody was waving towels, trying to catch the rescuers' attention. Nobody seemed to know what to do. They didn't know whether they should uh, stay in their rooms. There was no way to get word to them. They were trying to use bullhorns. There were at least 5,000 guests, staff, and other people in the building. Firefighters, paramedics, and other rescue workers moved up and down the stairways to evacuate the high-rise. Rick and I and a county paramedic came across another man that uh, was evidently having a heart attack. So we uh, started an IV on him in the hallway on a uh, kind of a crash cart that they use for taking drinks to the people and such in the, in the rooms. The paramedic had broken his ribs, kicking doors in, looking for people. Yeah. And uh, so he asked Larry to help him start the IV. OK, all 12 of them smoke inhalation. That one there, hypertension. This one here, no, no history. This one's a little shot. Hold on, Kevin.